house plans, titles, future. We knew where they were. There was nothing to hide. There was nothing to hide. And this made it so easy for me during this period of time when he was unwell, as I was able with the girls to access the funds when supporting him. Nyendakusima, uh, sweetie, uh, for how selfless he was uh, to the children, and I, from summer, uh, uh, to Lucy, uh, as for Lucy, I really have no words. be Papa's princess. Yep. Uh, I'll miss him. I'll miss us. The girls will miss you. Uh, having to share with you Lucy and the twins, about your legacy and the great man that you are. I'm so proud of you and I'm proud to be your wife. I'll try my best to carry on your legacy with the children, with the children, and to be the best mom, grandma, I can be, with God being my guide, with God being my guide. I'll miss you, my sweetie, from your, mo from your morning greetings to our daily texts. <laughs> I guess every, every minute he would be texting me. Uh, I'm going to court. I'm out of court. I'm going for lunch. Uh, I'm on my way home. I'll miss all that. I'll always love you and holding on to the memories that we shared together with the family. I'll do my best. I'll do all the things that you told that you loved, most especially staying in church. Not just church, but Anglican church. Not any church, Anglican church. Nisima Mkama, Urhanga, very much, Kumpo, Omcha, Okuraz, and Takwe Mchireho. Till the end. Rest in peace, my love. Rest in peace, my sweetie. I'll miss you till we meet again. Yesterday at the service that was held at home, the provost, the provost thought about how can we be able to see God even in such circumstances. Like how can we be able to find solace, peace and joy in times like this when it's hard? It's definitely hard to stand here and speak. I was negotiating with my sister over here, asking her to speak first, but she kept giving me that eye. 
at a point like this, the emotions are high, the pressure to speak, to say the right things. Also dealing with grief. But I'll do my best. What I'm going to say is not for daddy. God in his mercy gave me the time to be able to tell him everything that I needed to tell him. And I thank God for that. This morning I celebrate a man, a man I was privileged to call, to have as a father, and most importantly as a friend. I've often heard in the different um, memes that come on social media, there were two prominent gentlemen. One was T.D. Jakes, the other was um, Steve Harvey. And they were having a conversation about their children and what they want to leave to them. And T.D. Jakes said, it's not about what you leave for your children. The Bible tells us that a good man leaves that inheritance for his children. But it's not about what you leave for them. It's really about what you leave in them. Because that gives them the push. In 1998, Daddy always used to come for, he always used to have church programs. So every after school, we knew we were coming to All Saints. That particular week was a mission week, and they had um, church every day. It was a Wednesday, so I came with him, and the preacher that day delivered a very powerful sermon that really touched me. And um, I was in P6, and that altar call was made, and I came to the front and I gave my life to Christ. And in that, in that moment, I really didn't take it as a big deal, but when I turned, I was around here. When I turned, I saw my dad running from there, coming to hug me and said, Sama, you gave your life to Christ, you gave your life to Christ. And I was wondering, what's the big deal? <laughs> but that was the beginning of my journey with the Lord. And I, 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 I thank you, I thank, I thank, I thank my dad for making that initiation, for initiating that. I've never looked back. And for me, yeah, that is what he's left in me and that's what's going to keep me going. I really didn't write a speech. I really didn't write a speech, so um, I just wanted to reflect on the kind of father that he was. When I was growing up, my bedroom was opposite his, and he woke up really early, and then he would start singing. Red is thy bed, and you're in bed, and you're like, why? But that would always be our, our wake-up call. Like, every time Daddy woke up, he sang. That was just how he was, and I'm happy that I shared that. Every night, every night, even when we were adults, he would come in the middle of the night and touch our faces. So you just feel a hand touching your face. And every time we were sick, he would tell us to sleep in his room so that he would watch over us. And when I was going to law school, I actually wasn't going to law school. I told him I wanted to do performing arts. I wanted to be an actress on Broadway. <laughs> so I looked for the university. It was in South Africa. I had made the application and I presented my case. And then he looked at me and he said, you know what? For me, I'm not going to pay for you to do a course that's not professional. He said, law is good because when you do law, after that, you can be an actor if you want. So he said, he. He didn't force me, he encouraged me to do law. And I did, and I excelled, and I've never looked back. <laughs> Not that I don't have the aspirations of being an actress, that's still there, but well, <laughs> life took a different path. So that is how most people have the assumption that if either, you know, I was influenced, coerced or anything like that, no, but it was just, and um, when he was appointed a judge, I was working in South Africa, but I had had my first child, so I was home. That's how daddy was. He would, you know, wake up in the morning, say, no, you sleep, let me, take care of the baby. He would take care of my baby. We had a fight, a conversation about not to give the baby plain water with sugar because he felt that that would help the colic. 
but I did not think so, but what did I know? So one time, he took the baby from me, told me to sleep, and gave my baby water with sugar. <laughs> and the baby slept, and I slept as well. So that was the kind of father he was. My children, our children with my husband are going to miss him. He was such a good grandpa. My eldest son had gotten to a point where he was so interested in football, so they would watch the football game together. I think I will stop at this point and hand over to my sister, Tracy. So many people know um, Pops in many different ways. He had diff many different names. Um, people called him KK, Yango KK, Ken, I think some of his friends, Grandpa, um, of course, Honorable Justice Kenneth Kakuru, his Lordship, uh, but to us, we, we called him Paps. So in his uh, profession, um, in the judiciary, in his legal profession, as a human rights and environmental activist, as a pillar in the church, um, in education, as a sibling and as, uh, and as a friend, um, he left a very big impact in everyone's life. He was an overachiever, he was not forgettable, um, and he excelled in all these things. So you can only imagine um, what he was like in one of the most important roles that he had, and that was being a dad to us. Um, the greatest gift my dad gave us was his love. Very loving and intentional parent. Looking back on my childhood, um, I know it was very exceptional and it was filled with happiness and joy when he told me about, when he, he kept on telling us stories individually about our childhood. He told me a story when, you know, before, like two days before I was born, he wrote a letter to my mom and he said, you know, I had a dream that she gave birth to a baby girl in Nairobi, so he sent this letter. And by the time he sent this letter, um, I think my mom received it, she had already given birth to me, and he proceeded to tell me by the time he reached Nairobi, um, I was already born, they didn't even know that he was the dad, because I think my uncle was there before. Um, he told us different stories about our lives, um, he told me on my first birthday, I stood up, um, cut the cake, I grabbed the knife, cut the cake. He kept our clothes from when we were young. He has all our report cards, birthday cards, success cards. He kept all these memories alive for us because he had a vision that these were not only pictures and memories, they were lessons. When I look back at my baby pictures in Nairobi Hospital, I see a parent with love. I see a very well, well accomplished father who endeavored to have his wife give birth in a good hospital at the time. When I look back at my first day of primary school, and when I look back, I don't mean I remember. I mean he told me what happened, and I also have the picture evidence to prove it. Because everyone thinks I love pictures, but he, he loved taking pictures. So I, I have a picture when some other is holding my hand and I was going to P1W. And um, when I look back at that first day, I feel pride. I feel the pride and love that he had to watch me take such a small step in my life. But in that moment, he made it absolutely important and special. I see that he taught my sister Sama to look out for us and care for us and she has continued to do so till this day. He has created countless memories of our childhood and he told them to us so vividly. And like I said, he had the picture evidence to prove it. You know, he said, I don't trust these phones. Make sure you print out all these pictures, get hard copies and, and have them. Because he knew that one day I would be 33 years old. I would have my own children and I would understand that being a parent is about being intentional with your acts of love. And Childhood is very important. It's a very important stage that most definitely molds um, someone's future self. Pops was extremely overprotective over us. I wouldn't say overprotective, extremely protective over us. 
He was our superhero that would come to our rescue whenever we asked. I remember in primary school, uh, we never would get punished for, you know, not writing like, good news or not having a hanky, like things you are not supposed to get punished for. Um, we would hide it from him because we were scared for the teachers. <laughs> so one day he found out, he didn't care what I did, he woke up very early, went to the deputy's office and told them, you know, like with a finger, never touch my child again. If you want, it, want, if you want to punish someone, punish your own children. <laughs> but never punish my child again. And being young, I thought it was embarrassing because I never saw other parents do that. Other kids maybe thought we were different and that's weird. But today, now that I have my, my own kids, you had better not punish my child. <laughs> better have your own kids, but don't touch my child. <laughs> um, he, was our, he was our confidant. Um, we had him, it was pups and the girls. Um, so we used to, when we used to stay in Imbuya, and we all used to stay at home at the time, we used to take walks with him to Bugolobi, to the trading center. And if he wanted to share something, like something personal, we would time him. So we would say, he would tell us, oh girls, I'm going for a walk, do you want to come? So we would go. So this particular time, we went with him. It was the three of us, we went with him. So some are, I'm going to tell this story, but yeah. So, um, so Samantha, I could, I could see them talking. So she proceeded to tell him, that, you know what, Daddy, I have a stalker. There is this person from church, and he's been following me. He sends me about us, but we are definitely not spoiled. And um, so there's a time when he did that. He gave, up, he gave me my first car. But then, you know, one time I was driving and I see smoke coming out of the bonnet and I park, I'm like, what's going on? The guy is like, when was the last time you serviced your car, madam? I'm like, I don't know. I don't remember, I don't know. So of course I could not call him, but I had to figure it out for myself. So I called his mechanic, I called, I think my cousin Dennis, I figured it out, so when I went home, I told him like, oh, by the way, this happened to me. Then he was like, uh-huh, what did you do? So I told him, and I was like, good, like, good, like, keep it up, I'm glad you figured it out, you didn't call me. So with all those lessons, he would just give us a few steps, and then we would continue. So like Auntie Charity said, we had his ATM cards when he would, he would be um, gone, like um, he would go to Imbara, he would leave us with his ATM, he would tell us, you know, go to Nakawa market, you know what to do, buy things for the home, manage the home when I'm not around. And because our mom had passed away, he could have easily told, you know, a house help to do that or someone else to do that, but he wanted us to do that for ourselves because, again, he had a vision that would be um, grown women of our own and would need to maintain and... Um, maintain our households. We are not easily impressed by material things because he taught us that what lies within us is the most important thing. Um, he also taught me and all of us a lot about love and relationships. Um, with our mom, I would watch him plan surprises for her. He would blindfold her and walk her out of the house and you know there would be like maybe like a car or a gift in the parking. He would plan surprise dinners for her. He would bring for her gifts when he travels. In the extremely difficult times, she never left his bedside in hospital. Um, she has six month old twins that she hasn't seen in almost two months but she never left his side. So she would tell us, you guys you can't sleep, but I'm going to be here with, with daddy. So she would sit by his bedside, hold his hand throughout the night, like clockwork. My pups, thank you for the love. Thank you for your stories and lessons. I'm so heartbroken. Um, I don't know this life without you. Uh, you knew
knew you were everything to me. When he was diagnosed in um, 20, 2021, I had to make sure. I, I went with him and at a charity to Dubai, but I had to make sure because I knew, I know perhaps he's, he's going to try and protect me. He's going to try and sugarcoat this whole situation, but I need to know. So I literally forced myself in the room. And it was all because of him. So um, I said everything I had to say to him. I held your hand and knelt by your bedside. And I told you we were going to be okay. And for everything you were, everything you taught us, we're your army and the fight continues. So we joked, we just joked and said that, you know, pups wouldn't want us to look so bad and, you know, he hated, you know, he liked us to represent him. So we made sure, even with all that grief, we had to get our nails done here because if he was around, <laughs> he would definitely tell us, you're not serious. That hair? No. So... A few weeks before he passed, I asked him to name my son, and he named him Atwine. And he explained to me that, he's explained to me the name, of course it means God is with us. And I take it as the last lesson that he gave to me. So, God is with us, perhaps is with us. Uh, I love you, I love you forever, perhaps. Until we meet again, thank you. Um, he cared for us so deeply. He got to know our friends, he loved them. He had a relationship with them, with many of them. Um, he, he really took the time to get to know us as, as people. And as his daughters, especially after, pap after mommy passed, um, we got that opportunity to to get really close to him and yeah I'm sorry I'm, I'm going to be all over the place but yeah so um, Eden I went to school at Eden 